And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Metriacanthosaurus, which, as we mentioned earlier, it was, it doesn't actually appear directly in the films, but it is mentioned in some ways in Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. And it was also a request from Dinosaur4602 via YouTube, so thanks. It was a synraptorid that lived in the Jurassic and what is now England. So its name is actually on an embryo cooler in the Jurassic Park movie. And it was also seen in a Jurassic Park brochure, mm. which was made as a movie prop. And it's also on the Jurassic World brochure and the Jurassic World website. So that is its connection here. <laughs> well, I mean, the fact that it was on a cooler is pretty good. That it was written in the movie itself. Yes. <laughs> and the brochures are pretty funny, too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the brochure is especially funny because doesn't it have like six dinosaurs pointed out on a map? And this is one of them randomly. Yeah. It's like there's no Dilophosaurus, but we got this Metriacanthosaurus randomly. Because why not? <laughs> yeah. They got all these dinosaurs to choose from. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it was a synraptorid that lived in the Jurassic and what is now England, and its name means moderately spined lizard. That seems like a, a British kind of way to describe something. It's moderately spined. <laughs> Not too spiny, just moderately spined. Well, the guy who eventually named it was British, so there you go, I guess. Thanks for the <laughs> confirmation. <laughs> yeah, but first it was... Its bones were originally described in 1923 by Frederick von Huhn, and he classified it as a new species of Megalosaurus, as Megalosaurus parkeri, and the parkeri was named in honor of fossil hunter W. Parker, who found the bones. And he described a hip, a leg bone, and part of a backbone, so there's not too much to go on. But then in 1932, Frederick von Huhn reclassified it as Altaspinax parkeri because of its neural spines, which were kind of tall. Moderately tall, some might say. <laughs> but with altispinax, that sounds more spiny. Yes. Well, so what happened then? It was in 1964, Alec Walker, the British paleontologist, found that the fossils were different enough from altispinax, so he renamed it as a new genus, Metriacanthosaurus. And the name refers to the height of its neural spines, which were taller than megalosaurus spines, but shorter than altispinax spines. Right in the middle. Yep. Like the Goldilocks. They should call it Goldie Spinax. <laughs> <laughs> and Metriacanthosaurus seems to be closely related to Yang Chuanosaurus. And actually, Gregory Paul synonymized the two back in 1988. But then in 2007, Darren Nash and David Martell found that they were actually distinct genera. The spines that it had may have made for a low hump, similar to Acrocanthosaurus. As you may have guessed, being a synraptorid, it was carnivorous. It was medium size, estimated to weigh maybe about a ton, but it's not clear how large it was. If you compare it to similar theropods, it may have been up to about 20 feet or 6 meters long. Yeah, it's pretty moderate. I like how often this whole hump versus spine thing comes up, because looking at modern animals like I think bison, they sort of have spine-looking things, but then it turns out they have a hump. Oh, yeah. So it's hard to tell just from the bones whether it's a hump or a spine. What if they actually had spines? That'd be so weird. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Or if camels had spines, yeah. two little spine bumps. 